Joining me now is Dr. Sachin Jain, CEO of Scan Group and Health Plan. Dr. Jain, thank you so much for joining me today. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. A lot has happened in the past year when we look at the landscape of healthcare, and I know that you've been a pretty big advocate of health equity and discussions around that, and all the big ideas that I think are really coming out. Let's start off with that. You recently penned a, an op-ed in Forbes about the idea of how pilots take forever and sometimes never make it out of pilot phase. And you and I have had this discussion multiple times. Uh, you know, you've seen things that have been an idea 10 years ago and never made it out of the pipeline. So what might be different now, do you think, uh, or, or if not at all, what, what's missing to sort of make this become full scale where ideas that are good and can help save the healthcare system money can come out? I think we had different expectations of how change actually happened in healthcare uh, prior to the pandemic. I think that we had um, kind of a management philosophy that was around consensus, incrementalism, you know, trying things slowly before actually you know bringing them to full scale. And as a result, ideas that should have should have seen prime time two decades ago, like telehealth and uh, video visits, uh, actually took literally a global crisis to actually come into you know broad effect. And what I think we saw was a more rapid pace of change around how organizations made decisions, how they pivoted to adapt to circumstances. And as a result, we saw greater implementation of just what I call radical common sense, ideas that should be in practice, but for all kinds of reasons, uh, don't make their way into practice. Well, and let's talk about that, because I know that right now we're seeing this insane interest in biotech and remote monitoring and remote health. Uh, everyone is looking at it as the answer to a lot of uh, cost savings, as well as pushing the needle when it comes to, um, uh, sorry, moving the needle when it comes to getting therapies that work or things that just are more efficient. Do you think think that it, it, what do you think about that? Just about the idea that there's just a lot more money out there for all these so solutions. So I'm worried. I'm worried that we're losing focus on the things that actually matter to patients. Um, you know, I think when most people are sick, uh, what they really want, what they really care about is a highly competent, caring professional on the other end of the conversation you, that actually makes sure that the right things happen for them at the right time. And I think that what we're doing right now is we're focusing a lot on kind of new models of care, we're focusing a lot on tech enablement. All of these are positive trends, but I think that the main thing I would like to make sure is that we don't lose focus on the relationships that people really value between clinicians and patients. And I would say over the last two decades, we've seen huge erosions in those relationships. And so what I would love to see from the next wave of startups and companies that are being financed is actually a higher degree of focus on relationship-driven care. It's a lot of what we're trying to do uh, at SCAN right now. I was going to ask you about that. What are you being? What are you actually doing to to sort of put your money where your mouth is? Because I think that that's part of the the problem is that um, the reason why these pilots sort of never see light is there's a financial equation uh, that comes into play, and no one wants to be the first one to lose money over an idea. Essentially, so what what do you do? So we really believe very strongly in the concept of risk based models of healthcare delivery. Um, and what I mean by that is organizations that take on global risk or capitation uh, and actually manage the total cost of care, not just a small segment of it. And so we're building new models of care, you know, focused in the geriatrics arena, in the palliative care arena. Um, and one of the things that we're really focused on is ensuring that all the pieces fit together and that there's a high degree of integration. One of the things I'm worried about is that you see a lot of point solutions coming into being. A lot of the companies that are being invested in are a diabetes company or a men's health company or a, more recently uh, a gay and lesbian health company. Um, all of these are positive trends if they actually connect to the broader ecosystem and as opposed to creating new silos. Um, all of us have had the experience of the right hand, you know, not speaking to the left in healthcare. I think we have an opportunity to create, you know, a more cohesive experience for patients through some of these new companies. Um, and so that's what we're trying to do at SCAN, is we're trying to create highly integrated models of care that really focus on you know, patients as whole people, not as the individual diseases that they actually have. 
How do you do that as a CEO looking at, you know, the traditional system? Uh, you can't necessarily reform it overnight. And the rules and regulations that govern how you can make money uh, are still in place. So how do, how do you move that needle? Yeah, one of the things I say is that it's very hard to disrupt the incumbents when you're, in fact, relying on the incumbents uh, in the course of actually uh, disrupting them. And so, you know, I think part of what you have to do is, you know, bite, bite an elephant, you know, one bite at a time. How do you eat an elephant? You eat it, you know, one bite at a time. Um, and so we're taking on kind of, I think, what I think are the most significant chunks of problems. The, from where I sit, the biggest issue is access to primary care. Um, you know, when I survey friends, uh, you know, relatives, you know, I ask them, how satisfied are you with your primary care experience? And to a person, I think most people... Um, are not particularly satisfied with their primary care experience. And that's an experience that's actually shared on the side of the physicians who are actually delivering that primary care. Um, and so I think there's an opportunity for us to build new models of care that actually really emphasize prevention, that emphasize management of chronic disease, that, man that, that really focus on providing patients with access. I mean, what happens at between the hours of 5 p.m. and 9 a.m. most days? People go to the emergency room. Um, that's not an efficient or effective way to actually receive care. And so, you know, when when people talk about disrupting healthcare and they talk about new ideas and new visions for healthcare, I always tell them we already know what the problems are. The issue is actually executing on on actually building the solutions that we know will work to solve those problems. Well, let's talk about that, because I know that you recently tweeted, um, you know, the idea that there needs to be a really big sort of movement, like a civil rights type movement, especially because now with the pandemic, we've seen just how inequitable the healthcare system is, broadly speaking. Even solutions like telehealth rely on yet another problem that has yet to be solved, which is the digital divide. So we're, we, you know, even building some of these common sense answers or easy to fix solutions rely on yet another outstanding problem. What can be done about those at this point and, and, and whose responsibility is it? I mean, Anjali, I think people are going to look back at this time in history and we're going to be embarrassed by what we do. Um, we're going to be embarrassed by the inequities that we have. We're going to be embarrassed by the poor quality of care that's delivered to so many people in this country. And we're going to th think about what happened in the same way that we look back at what happened in the pre-civil rights era and even you know, to this current time where you know, we have the persistence of, of racism, the persistence of racial inequities, we're going to look at this and we're going to say this was healthcare's version of that. And so I believe that we as a country have to actually start engaging in the same way past generations engage issues like civil rights and start thinking about more fundamental solutions to these issues. Um, they're not going to get better uh, through the status quo. We know that. Um, I think what we'll start to see is kind of marginal improvements. We'll start to see some new models. But at the end of the day, we've got millions of Americans who still have uh, no health insurance or have underinsurance. Um, we've got people whose primary source of bankruptcy in this country is actually health care costs. That's a problem. That's embarrassing in a time when we have, you know, so many riches, but they're so unequally distributed. I think, you know, health care is ultimately a fundamental foundation of our participation in our society. And, you know, we don't necessarily see it as that. And I think the movement that I'm talking about is starting to get the country to see it as that and not see it as big business, which is what it is today. Now, that's not to say that there aren't opportunities to make money in healthcare. I think there certainly are. But what I will say is we have to look at the cost drivers and we have to look at the sources of significant waste that exist in the system, take aim at them, and actually begin to solve them. And where is that waste? Ultimately, right now, you know, healthcare cost is a function of the price of services and the quantity of services. And we spend a lot of time talking about the price of those services in this country, but we don't spend enough time thinking about the quantity of services delivered, unnecessary services that are delivered. And what I mean by unnecessary isn't what most people think about, which is fraud, waste, and abuse. What I'm talking about is actually you know, unmanaged chronic disease that then turns into amputations, dialysis, all of which is preventable and unnecessary and is somebody's profit margin in the current model that we have in this country. And so we have to flip that equation and get to a place where healthcare organizations are more focused on keeping people healthy and that the hospital is a failure, use of the hospital is a failure state as opposed to kind of a normal thing in the course of people's lives. 
Absolutely. I think the profit margin idea is, is exactly uh, sort of part of it. In addition to the idea um, that, you know, we're treating patients as consumers now, and that's something uh, that that they may not have been notified about. So I, I often wonder about when we're going to get to that point where both sides meet and we have the tools as patients, uh, you know, to be able to navigate that. But uh, Dr. Sachin Jain, CEO of Scan Group and Health Plan, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate it.